Well, but let me just tell you once again. <clears throat> I um, I did service, I'm not service, I mean, I was in the United States Air Force, and uh, I, was a, I was a medical technician, lab technician. The guy that takes your blood and, you know, tests and all that stuff. But one of the things, um, when I got out of the Air Force for about two years after I did, I worked in a hospital, and, you know, we did everything in the lab, but more, but when I got to the hospital, I was working in hematology, and I got very good with it. But then things shifted or whatever, and, um, and I was doing the blood bank. Well, part of hematology, you have to do blood bank draw blood and all that and testimony and stuff. But the thing I remember is that at some particular point um, there, this was in New Jersey at the, uh, the Princeton Hospital, now it's Princeton Medical Center, but um, I was very good at drawing blood. When I say very good, I mean, uh, let's just, I'll just exalt myself. I was the best phlebotomist on the East Coast. Okay, I'm, I'll exaggerate that. But I was so good because I think there was a reason, but people would line up, wouldn't even sign up when they knew I was coming to work kind of thing because I was painless. It was, it was amazing. Anyway, but I remember when I first started when I was in the Air Force trained. I mean, I'm nervous, I'm <laughs> shaking, get the needle in the vein and all the rest of that stuff. I'm regular needle, I'm not talking about the big, you know, 16 gauge or whatever they use in, in blood banking. Uh, but the thing is, I think I was so good because I had real empathy. I mean, I never liked needles. I mean, but I think part of the things were my grew up, you know, we had a lot of drugs, you know, intravenous drugs and all that. I never went to no, no way, <laughs> because I just hated needles, you know. But because of that, I saw empathy, so I couldn't hurt anybody, you know. But I'm thinking about the time when I first started, you know, um, in general, taking blood from people and whatever have you, until, you know, when I ended my little career, because I'll tell you that in a second why I ended it. Uh, but I realized that my learning curve was a little quicker because I had empathy and I didn't want to hurt anybody. But also, as I got better and better, my technique got better and better because it was something in me that wanted it to become better. And you see, you have to understand something like blood, uh, taking somebody's blood or sticking a needle in somebody's arm. You can't really be taught that. I mean, you, you know, somebody tells you to shoot you. But what's the, what, the, the question is, what's between the teaching process and the learning process? It's the two separate things, I think. You know, teaching just, I don't know what teaching is. because I've taught all my life, but I can't really tell you what it is. I mean, teaching is just inspiring. It's just, sometimes being an example is inspiring, and it's in, trying to keep people on course, but I won't get into that. But the learning process is, is more interesting, because I think really to learn, you have to have, an, uh, you have to have an interest in that thing, and then you, at some particular point, you bust through, and you find the thing that connects with you. Now, the thing about this whole blood banking thing is that I was so good, and it was a good job, and whatever it had, it was good money, and all of this and that stuff. But then we had this administrator come in, new hospital administrators. This is when the old hospitals just became hospitals, became medical centers, and all these bureaucrats coming in. People that weren't in the medical field, now they're going to administer, tell you how to dress, how to work, how to whatever, you know, some middle management thing, which is the problem we have. They probably have today have a lot of middle managing people coming into fields they know nothing about, but yet they're going to try to instill discipline and order to a certain field. So anyway, this guy came in and he said, they basically I had to deal with them when I didn't have to wear a tie. <laughs> that was my deal when I first started. He said I had to wear a tie, so we had this big thing. Finally, they fired me because I wouldn't wear a tie. Very interesting. Here yeah, I'm the best phlebotomist they have, but you know, bureaucrat says, hey, we'll sacrifice the best phlebotomist for order in our field. And I actually think that's the problem, one of the biggest problems we have these days, is that people want order rather than expertise or whatever, whatever you, want, you want to call it. And in the name of order and discipline, they'll, they'll get rid of qualified people and put anybody in there. And then, of course, everything starts to go down, 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 down. Anyway, I want to make this short. But I'm just thinking about the movie, learning and teaching, whatever. I think there's a new book out. Uh, something about the brain, I think the mind, I'll, I'll, I'll list it someplace. But it's supposed to be dealing exactly with this thing. What's the basis of learning, the basis of teaching, and how the problem with the, with the world, with the teaching world today, is that you have a lot of private organizations trying to come in, but they really are administrators, they're not educators. Big problem. Anyway, it's a problem for another day. And this, is, this has been one of those dispatches from the arts director emeritus, is that would be me, T, from the Patterson's taking the train to the bed, letting you know. But I only suspect.